oil train shouldn't move at speeds at which, you know, if they derail, you have spectacular spills, fires, and potentially catastrophic events. And, you know, we know that those rail cars will puncture and release oil at speeds as low as 12 miles an hour. Um, the rail cars themselves are not built to withstand the speeds that they're traveling in the Columbia River Gorge. That train was only going 26 miles an hour. If you're traveling along Highway 14 and you pace one of those going on the BNSF line, you'll be going 50 miles an hour. And a train moving that speed along the Columbia River, if it were to derail, uh, you would have an even more spectacular problem than what we saw in Mosher. Despite that, we found almost no traction at either the state or the federal level, at least in Oregon. Their lobbyists were very effective working on the legislature in Salem. They had a couple legislators who um, were there to work their interests and to try to make sure that no regulation passed would be too onerous uh, for the railroad industry. And constantly arguing that you know the state couldn't take any action because it was all preempted by the federal government. And that's one of the reasons why a lot of the action has occurred at the local level, where people have found a real opportunity to take some action at the actual terminal level, uh, realizing that it's difficult to stop these trains along the tracks. They are going to the place generating the oil train traffic itself, a place like Zenith or the proposed Tesoro Savage oil train terminal in Vancouver.